The Miseducation of Cameron Post is the second feature film from director Desiree Akavan, and it's about a teenage girl who's forced by her family to undergo gay conversion therapy when she's caught in the backseat of a car with another girl. I hadn't seen the trailer or anything, but given the subject matter, I was expecting a more serious, dour film. Instead, I was surprised by how humorous Miseducation was, and it managed to have funny dialogue without feeling overly jokey or quippy. However, it also had a strong, genuine emotional core, and definitely gets more intense towards the end. The film is set in the 90s, but it doesn't hit you over the head with it. There are just a few references to the time period here and there, and they never feel forced. I found the characters to be pretty well written. The kids seem like actual high schoolers, and the people that run the gay conversion camp avoid coming off like cartoonish villains, despite the emotional trauma they inflict. The characters are brought to life by an excellent cast all around, but the film rests squarely on its lead, Chloe Grace Moretz. She gives a fantastic performance that's subtle while still getting across Cameron's emotional state. Moretz has to at least be in the conversation for Best Actress when Oscar season arrives. It would have been easy for a film about gay conversion therapy to be overly preachy and didactic. Some might say that about this movie, but I didn't find it to be that way, with perhaps a couple of minor exceptions. I think this makes sense, as I imagine the vast majority of people out there agree that conversion therapy is wrong, and it's in fact illegal in some places, so the film doesn't really need to hammer that point home. And most likely, anyone who would watch or even be aware of a movie like this already concurs with this message. It's also never melodramatic and feels pretty realistic. Miseducation moves along at a relatively quick pace, and it's only 90 minutes long, but it still finds time to slow down for particularly impactful moments especially with the occasional use of long takes. In general, the cinematography is solid, but nothing mind-blowing. It's not overly stylish, but avoids looking bland like many films in the same vein. Overall, the film is quite well made, and I had no real issues with it, so I'll give it an 8 out of 10. The film has been well received, most notably winning the top prize at the 2018 Sundance Film Festival. It also has an 84% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 69 on Metacritic. As of now, The Miseducation of Cameron Post has made just under $800,000 the box office. That's all for this review. Please don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for listening.